I think that it's so amazing that right now you can get access to training by so many different people that you will never meet and you could never meet in real life. And yet by purchasing an online course or an online program, you can be trained by these people. And I think that's amazing. But I do think that there are a couple of mistakes that people make over and over again. And I want to talk about them today to help you navigate things. Okay, let's dive in. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach, and I've been helping riders all over the world through online programs and training have better conversations with their horses. I really love working with riders who are training alone without a trainer or coach. So let's dive in. Okay, so there are lots of things that we can now purchase online. Like, it's amazing, okay? Like, how lucky are we? We get all these different resources literally at the other end of a screen, whether it be a phone or a computer, or a laptop, a tablet, whatever, okay? We've all these different resources that we can use and that we can actually help us to have this better connection and this better conversation with our horses. However, there are three mistakes that I see riders make over and over and over again. And it actually tends to hold them back from achieving the full potential of a course or a program that they signed up to. And it also tends to maybe leave a bad taste in their mouth. So I wanna chat about those today. So as maybe if you're considering, especially at this time of year, diving into some sort of online course or program, this will help you to make a decision that actually is going to be suitable for you and your horse going forward. Okay, so all that being said and done, I think the first thing that riders tend to do is they purchase before they're ready. Okay, now hold on there. I believe in progress. I think that you have to push the comfort zone. I talk about that all the time, okay? so. Obviously, if you're purchasing something you cannot already do, it's so as you can learn to do that thing. Yeah, that makes sense. However, what I do see riders doing is they purchase a course that needs a certain level of skill or knowledge to be present before this course or this program is going to be of any benefit, okay? So it's like there, there's prerequisites, okay? And a lot of riders don't tick the prerequisites. They don't have those things in place. And whether they're lying to themselves and kind of like, oh yeah, 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 I'll get there. Or they see this really good deal and they're like, you know what, I can use that next year, okay? That's fine if that's going to be the plan, but hold on, then we'll talk about this in step two. But I do think that sometimes people are purchasing courses and programs that really are not the right fit for them, okay? So a good way to think about this is that when you are trying to perfect something, when you are trying to get better at something or master something, okay, you do need to have a knowledge of it and you do need to be able to do I suppose a certain level of it. If you think about jumping, for example, that's fairly basic, okay? It's, uh, jumping's not basic. The, <laughs> the, the, the whole analogy I'm going to use now is fairly basic. Um, so if you think about jumping, if you want to go to, let's say, a graded show or a graded competition, it's, it's often a good idea that you can do a little bit more than that at home, okay? So when you're practicing at home in your own arena, in the comfort of your own arena, okay, that you're able to do a little bit more so that when you get to the show or to the competition, you're able to then really hone your skills in order to get points or whatever it is that you're looking to do at the show, okay? So it's important to think about that. I think that a lot of people, when they're riding, it's kind of the equivalent of starting school maybe for a child at the age of four but you actually put them into a class full of 12 year olds who have been in school since they were four okay like the four-year-old that has never done anything like this before is going to feel a little lost and feeling a little lost can often make people feel like they can't do something and that is not correct the thing is you're just not ready for it right now so be quite discerning when it comes to what you can do, what you can't do, and where you are right now in your journey before you dive into a program, okay? The second 
mistake that I see people doing is that they expect like a fairy godmother situation. It's like they, you know, they, they click buy now or whatever it is. Okay, they click go. Okay, click the button on the computer or on the phone. Ding, and it's like this rush. Okay, you get this like. I don't know if it's like a dopamine hit or something, but you get this like rush that you're like, yes, yes, I've done it. And a lot of riders can, and and I, I know this sounds funny, but a lot of riders can get so swept up in this wave of euphoria regarding buying or purchasing the program that they forget or they lose sight of the fact that that literally was the very first step of the program, <laughs> okay? Like the first step. Like you have to kind of see the program as, okay, right now I'm in South Africa. So if I was to go to Ireland, if I was go, to go back home, okay, uh, there are a lot of steps for me to get back to Ireland right now if I was to, if I was to really take it step by step. Like it would start off with me like exiting the house, okay, this house right now, I'd have to leave through the door. That would be the first step, yeah? But then like, that is not being in Ireland. <laughs> There's a whole other, do like the, it, it's, you know, if you, if you were to list it all out piece by piece, what do I have to do then eventually to get to Ireland? That's a course or a program. You have to do all the other steps. Buying it is the first step. It's like stepping out the door, okay? You are not at the destination. Really important to remember that, okay? And I also think that where many riders kind of let themselves down with this is they buy it, they get swept up, as I said, in this kind of, you know, woo, I've done this, yes, this euphoria that comes with it. And then they fail to actually take the time to schedule in time into their life, like their real life, the day to day living. Once that kind of high wears off that they the high that they got when they bought the program, once that wears off, they fail to schedule the time to then go through the program and not just remember, this is horse riding. We have to move past learning. We have to do Okay, the only way we're going to improve as riders is by taking action, actually getting out there, getting into the arena and doing the work and failing miserably lots and lots and lots and keeping on practicing and changing and tweaking and going back to the lessons and saying, hold on, this isn't working. Where am I going wrong? I'm missing a step here somewhere and going over it and over it and through it and through it and through it. That's how you make progress. That's how the program works for you. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get the results. It's simple as. So if you are going to purchase a program, make sure you schedule time to both go through the program, okay? So to, to I don't know, watch the material, to, we'll talk about that just now, but to, to whatever way the program is delivered, to, to consume it, okay? Go through the program, consume the material, and then also create time to actually put it into practice, okay, to, to do the work and realizing that if there is a certain module on a certain topic, you're probably not going to be able to achieve it in a day. It's going to take quite a few times. You know, that, that's the whole process of learning. That's the joy of learning. <laughs> it can be a frustrating joy sometimes, okay, we get that. But it is important to give yourself that time. Okay, the third mistake I see people making a lot when it comes to purchasing an online course or a program to help them in the writing is getting involved in something that doesn't actually suit their learning needs, okay, or their learning style. Like, I love audio, so that's why I create audio horse riding lessons. Woohoo, there you go, okay. But I do, I like consuming audio, I love podcasts, that's how I like things. For me to sit down and watch a video, I don't really have time. I, d I just don't have the time to do that. So I, being what I enjoy doing and how I like learning, I created programs for people who like learning like me. There you go. Now, that might not suit you. You may love videos. That's fine. So then find programs that have videos in them, okay? If you love reading, if you love workbooks, if you love... I don't know, filling things out. Get programs that do that, okay? 
I also think that not just how the program's delivered is important, but also then if we think about the elements of it. So do you need accountability or can you trust yourself to hold yourself accountable? That can be a toughie, hey, especially when things are not going the way you want them to go. But if you trust yourself to hold yourself accountable, wonderful, hack on, okay? But if you need accountability, well, you're going to have to get a program that's going to offer you some sort of accountability. Makes sense, okay? Maybe you need an element of coaching. Maybe you need to interact with, speak with, have time with the person who's creating the program in order to ask questions. It depends. Some people, they just go it alone. They're able to do their own thing. They enjoy self-study. They are disciplined enough to hold themselves accountable, to go in, get the work done and make it work for them. Other people, not so much. And that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that, okay? It depends on your learning style. But what is important is that you understand your learning styles style and then you actually go and find programs that will support that okay support you and what you need your requirements what's going to help you to get across the finish line that is going to be really really beneficial for you okay so remember programs can be delivered like via email you can log into a website a podcast youtube facebook group Telegram, there's so many different ways that you can have programs delivered to you nowadays. And it's beautiful and it's amazing. And that's what I'm saying. But what is important is that you find what suits you best. Okay. Now, I realize that it kind of sounds like I'm putting a big downer on this. I'm not. What I said at the very beginning is so true. I think it's amazing how there are trainers all over the world that honestly, like honestly, we could never, ever, ever get to train with all these different people in person like it just wouldn't be possible you know we all have lives to live we all have responsibilities we have things to do yeah and even just from a time factor we couldn't but now with the internet we have the opportunity to train with these people albeit virtually but we do and we can learn from so many different people and I think that's amazing because I am a absolute believer that what makes you the equestrian that you are is by taking these different knowledge from the different places, blending it together to create your own unique style. I think that's really important and I really and truly I encourage you to go do it. Find somebody you enjoy and then invest in that program. Okay, I am going to leave it at that for today. If you're interested in the Strides for Success Black Friday sale, which will be going on later this week, you can pop over to stridesforsuccess.com forward slash black. There you go. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Have a great week. Keep well, and I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.